Crossroads. Each week, Chevrolet presents a true story based on the actual experiences of American clergymen, pastor, priest, or rabbi. The men who give inspiration and guidance to people at the crossroads of life. Tonight, God's Healing, starring Vincent Price in the story of Reverend Alfred W. Price, now of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Not long ago, two members of the staff of the Mayo Clinic said that with scientific instruments they could cure 25% of the people who came to them, but that 75% were passing on to their bodies the sicknesses of their minds and souls. So you see, it makes sense when I say we can't expect God's healing on a physical plane unless we accept his laws on a spiritual plane. Let us pray. O oh Lord, take my mind and think through it. Take my heart and set it on fire. Take these hands and through them bring to these thy suffering children the fullness of thy healing power. Amen. We've had such good news, Dr. Price. Jimmy's much better. The doctor says he can get up next week. Oh, that's wonderful, Mrs. Davidson. Now, be sure he comes in the first days out. Don't you worry, doctor. Horses couldn't hold him back. I'm Peggy Burton, Dr. Price. This is the first time I've been to one of these services. Well, did you feel you were helped, Peggy? Oh, there's nothing wrong with me. I, uh, I was sort of investigating for someone else. Oh, member of your family? In a way. My mother. My father will bring her if I can arrange it. Oh, well, would you mind telling me what's wrong with her? We have a wonderful prayer group here, and I could put her name on our list of sick right now. She has a heart condition. Dr. Price, would you promise me one thing? That you won't tell anyone that I had anything to do with getting her to come. Certainly, but I'm afraid I don't understand. You will when you meet my mother. Oh, Peggy. Would you tell me your mother's name? Gould. Helen Gould. Ah, uh, Mrs. Gould. Oh, it was good of you to give us this early morning appointment, Dr. Price. Not at all. I had to come in early anyway to catch up on some letters. Nice to meet you, Mr. Gould. Why don't you sit down? Thank you. You know, this all seems very strange to me. I've been an Episcopalian all my life. But, but I've never heard of a healing service. Well, it isn't really so strange, Mrs. Gould, when you remember that Jesus made healing the sick one of the major works of his ministry. That sounds very impressive. But I really wonder if he would help someone like me. I have a heart condition, you see. I'm not afraid to die. I've done my best to lead a Christian life. I'm prepared to accept God's will. There's no reason for you to talk that way. You've broken every one of your doctor's orders. Rest, diet, smoking. Oh, what's the use, John? He as good as told me I'm hopeless. It's God's will. And there's nothing the doctor nor anyone else can do about it. Don't you agree, Dr. Price? I'm afraid I don't, Mrs. Gould. You see, I don't believe that God ever wills sickness. Mrs. Gould, I'm afraid I'll have to be frank with you. We can't help you here at St. Stephen's in your present frame of mind. What do you mean? Well, healing requires faith. You don't have any. But how can you say such a thing? I believe in God with all my heart and soul. Believing in God is one thing, Mrs. Gould. But believing that God can help you is another. But I told you I'm prepared to submit to his will. You're confusing resignation with defeatism. Resignation is good. Everyone who prays for healing must be ready in her inmost soul to accept a negative answer. But she shouldn't expect it. That's what I mean by having faith. You expect God's refusal. That's all very logical, Dr. Price. But have you ever really helped someone at one of your healing services? As someone with a serious illness, I mean. Let's see. Here's some letters.
address. Here's one. I must write and tell you the wonderful news. My arthritis has left my legs entirely and is gradually leaving my arms, too. I credit it entirely to the healing services and the prayers of your wonderful prayer group. Here's another letter from a man whose heart condition vanished after a single service. Really? Quite amazing. Now, tell me what I should do. Well, first, I want you to obey your doctor's orders. You can't expect God to heal you if you refuse to cooperate with his laws. And medical laws are as much his creation as the spiritual laws that I'm going to try to explain to you. Now, doesn't that make sense? It makes a lot of sense to me, Dr. Price. <laughs> try to visualize what you want when you pray. Think of your heart as young and perfect and free from damage. Remember, God will meet you where you are and give you all that you are able to receive. I'm going to do just as you say. Well, we'll be praying for you here. You can be sure of that. Come and see me soon again. Thank you. Goodbye, Dr. Price. I could not get Helen Gould out of my mind. She seemed to be following my spiritual prescription to the letter. But the strange request her daughter had made nagged at the back of my mind. I waited anxiously for news of her next visit to the doctor. I'm afraid there isn't any improvement, Mrs. Gould. The electrocardiogram still shows a serious block. But I feel so much better. Your general physical condition has improved a good deal. You have lost some weight, and uh, you tell me you have really stopped smoking. I think we have more reason for hope. You don't object to my attending healing services. No, but I don't think you should expect a miracle. Let's keep aiming at a gradual improvement. Well, Dr. Price says most healings are gradual. Making you obey my orders is the most important thing Dr. Price has done so far. Very well. I'll keep trying for gradual improvement. But I'll still keep praying for a miracle. Mrs. Gould, I think it's time you and I had an honest talk as to why you haven't received healing. What do you mean? Do you have any children? One, a daughter. Has there been trouble between you two? No trouble. I, I simply haven't seen her for some time. Why not? Well, she's married. She has her own life to live, and I have mine. What's left of it. And yet you haven't seen her for some time. That seems rather strange to me. Dr. Price. Yes? Peggy has hurt me deeply. I'm afraid it'd be very dangerous for me to discuss her at all. You know my doctor has ordered me to avoid all excitement. Well, from my point of view, Mrs. Gould, it would be equally dangerous not to discuss it. I feel a little Mrs. weak. Mrs. Gould, look, I, I don't see why we can't talk about this calmly and reasonably. Now, tell me, did this bitterness between you and Peggy begin before or after her marriage? I feel weak. I'd better get home. Whatever you say. Yes, I understand, Dr. Price. Well, actually, the background is quite simple. My mother's had her own way all her life with everybody. And then when I met Don and showed her I had a mind of my own, well, the sparks started to fly. She didn't approve of your marriage to Don. That's putting it mildly. Well, can you tell me why? Well, it sort of came out of the blue. Yes? A little token for the mother of the bride. Who is it, Mother? Mother? Who is it? Don. Don. Don't you dare. Don't you dare set foot in this house. Earl, what's going on here to disturb this nice, peaceful Saturday morning? I'm sorry, sir. Your wife seems to think I'm not fit to come into your home. You are trying to take our daughter away from us, and I won't let you. I think Peggy's old enough to decide for herself. Now, Helen, no need to insult the boy. Uh, We've been talking this over with Peggy. Frankly, Don, we, we feel you're letting this trip to Europe rush you into marriage without, without any financial resources, as far as we can see. Well, frankly, Mr. Gould, I, I don't think that's any of your business. 
Peggy and I are not the adolescents. We're prepared to take a few risks. Well, you see what I mean, John? He's trying to turn her against us. Oh, Mother, don't be ridiculous. I'm old enough to know what I want to do with my life. And what are you going to do with your life? Throw it away on this? Yes. Yes, I am. Don, will you wait in the car? I just want to pack a few things. I don't even want to see them go. I can't believe she's doing this to us. Now, Helen, she'll be all right. He loves her, I'm sure of that. They'll manage somehow. But she wouldn't even listen to me. I shall never forgive her for this. Never. A few weeks after we sailed for Europe, Mother had her first heart attack. She hasn't been well since. When we got back, I tried to see her, but she wouldn't have anything to do with me. And yet you thought enough of her to bring her to our healing services. That means you still care for her deeply. I care. But it's not love anymore. I'm more worried about my father. He's half sick trying to take care of her and patch things up between us. Have you prayed for your mother, Peggy? I tried, but and I... Why don't you try again? Think of her as she was when you were young. You must have loved her very much then. I did. That's what makes all this so hard to take. Peggy, we can't turn off our emotions like water faucets. Not without doing serious damage to ourselves somewhere. Try praying for your mother's spiritual health. That's where she needs healing first. Thank you, Dr. Price. I'll try. Hello? Yes, just a moment. It's for you, honey. Hello? Peggy, this is Alfred Price. If I got your mother to agree to a reconciliation, would you cooperate? What exactly do you mean by reconciliation? Oh, yes, I... I think I can do that, Dr. Price. But it would all depend on how Mother acted afterwards. All right, Doctor. Yes, goodbye. So what's up? Dr. Price wants me to meet Mother in his office. Talk things over. You know, forgive and forget. You agreed, huh? Don, she's my mother. And I don't like the thought of bringing a baby into a family where people hate each other. You make it sound like it's our fault. It isn't. But it would be our fault if Mother really wanted to forget all this nonsense and we refused. Why? <laughs> because she's my mother and I believe in forgiveness as a Christian. Oh. Look, honey, I love you and I have absolutely no objections to your following your religion, but don't let it go to your head. Oh, please, Don, don't talk like that. It makes me feel awful. Any apology from your mother would be just part of a shrewd maneuver to get you back under her thumb. She wouldn't be the first person to use phony Christian philosophy. Please, to... Don, please, stop talking like that. <laughs> on how she reacts to the transfusion she's getting. Mrs. Burton is outside, Doctor. I'll bring her right in. Hello, honey. How do you feel? Tired. Did you see the baby? 
No. All my is sin. He doesn't look like his father at all. Don, would you call Dr. Price and ask him to come down? You'll be all right, honey. You'll be all right. I know. But call him and, and ask him if he possibly can to, to bring my mother with him. All right, Mr. Burton, we must get her in bed now. what I can do, but I haven't seen Mrs. Gould for two weeks, and the last talk we had was anything but encouraging. But, Doctor, please. Please, she's calling for her. Make her understand. She, she's needed badly. I'm sorry, Dr. Price. You and I no longer have anything further to discuss. Did I hear the phone ring? No, it was the wrong number. Oh. Helen, is, is anything wrong? No, what? The phone. Well, you answer it. I'm going out. Hello? Oh, yes. How have you been, Dr. Price? Helen? No, she just went out. Peggy's had the baby. And she wants to see Helen. Just... Helen! Helen! She's gone. No, I, I don't know where. Certainly you can come out. I'll, uh, I'll be doing my best to locate her. Mother? Mother? Your mother isn't here, Peg. Just me. Dr. Price can't locate her. She won't come. No, he can't locate her, Peg. It's the truth. They must find her. She's not there. No, no, she didn't have an appointment. Oh, if she does come in, would you please have her call at once? Yes, at home. Thank you. Beauty parlor, I thought you might be there. Well, I've tried every place, every person I can think of. I'm afraid I give up. Well, let's try again, Mr. Gould. At the most unlikely place. How's she doing, Doctor? Next two hours will tell the story. But she still has a chance. If she fights. She will, Doctor. Hello. Where have you been? I've been trying to reach you for hours. I was sitting in the park. I had a feeling Dr. Price might decide to come out for a little visit. And I didn't want to be home for him. Hello, Mrs. Gould. How often do I have to tell you to stop hounding me, Dr. Price? You don't have to tell me that, Miss Gould. Hounding, as you call it, never healed anyone. I came out to see you because I had something to tell you that would be difficult, if not impossible, to discuss over the phone. It's about Peggy. Yes, it is about Peggy. I told you she's out of my life. No, she isn't, Mrs. Gould. Once you love someone deeply, you can never shut them out of your life. Well, how about Peggy? She shut me out of her life. It hasn't hurt her. Peggy hasn't shut anyone out of her life, Mrs. Gould. She wants you and needs you now more than ever before. She wants me? Yes. Peggy has... has had her baby. But... It's only the seventh month. I know, but the baby seems to be fine. It's a little boy. But Peggy's condition is serious. She wants to see you, Mrs. Gould. She asked me to bring you down. Is this true, John? Mrs. Gould, this is your last chance to regain your daughter. 
If you fail Peggy now, she will never be able to forgive you. The resentment she already feels will... It'll solidify around her heart like a cake of ice. It's unfair to put pressure on me like this. You know my doctor has ordered peace and quiet. You've been using your condition to escape from a great many things. But life has a strange way of catching up. You can't disguise fundamental realities like love and hate forever. You pretend to believe in love as a Christian. Well, this is your chance and your last chance to prove it. I love her. I'm willing to pray for her right now. Prayer without forgiveness, Mrs. Gould, is like a body without blood. I still can't see what good it'll do. She has one of the best doctors in the city. But you can do what the doctor can't do. You can give her a chance to fight for her life without the burden of resentment and hatred she's been carrying these past two years. I'm going to violate a confidence, Mrs. Gould, but I think the situation justifies it. Peggy asked me never to tell you this, but it was she who brought you down to our healing services. Peggy? What? What? Why, no. It was a friend, a friend of John's. No, it was Peggy. She suggested it to her father. Yes, it's true. If there was ever a time to stop this vicious nonsense that's been tearing our lives apart for the last two years, it's now. I want you to go down to that hospital with Dr. Price. Oh, honey, I'm right here. Mother, why did this have to happen? I love Tom so much. I love you, too. Doctor, I'm Alfred Price, Peggy's pastor. This is her mother, Mrs. Gould. We would like your permission to go in and see her. Oh, I'm sorry you'll have to wait. Peggy's getting another transfusion right now. Oh, Don, I, I came as fast as I could. Mrs. Gould came, too. Uh, hello. I didn't know he was going to be here. I don't think I'll be able to go through with it now. If that's your attitude, Mrs. Gould. I'm not going to let you anywhere near Peggy. Before either of you say another word, I want you to come over Mother. here. Mother. 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 Please listen to me. Please try to understand. I love him. I do. Every, everything would be all right. You just understand that. Dr. Price. Is it really you? Yes, baby. And I've brought along two friends. Oh. Peggy, dear. I came down with Dr. Price to pray for you, if you'll let me. Oh, Mother. I'm here too, Peggy. It's about time I said some prayers. <laughs> Almighty and all-merciful God, we ask you to use our humble prayers as a channel of strength for this, thy beloved daughter. Heal her body, O Lord, and fill her heart and soul with resolution and joy. Help us who love her to lift her up into thy healing light. Next week, Chevrolet, in behalf of your local authorized Chevrolet dealer, presents another dramatic story based on the actual experiences of American clergymen on Crossroads. In just a moment, you'll see next week's star, Jeff Morrow. Hello. In next week's Crossroads, I play the Reverend M. R. Watkinson, a small-town pastor who was instrumental in the adoption of our national motto. This inspiring story is played against the background of the war between the states. 
See In God We Trust next week. Thank you. Stories for Crossroads are selected by our Board of Advisors, Captain Maurice M. Witherspoon, Father George B. Ford, and Dr. William F. Rosenblum.